Today we're going to look at a pretty nice algebra problem that presents itself as being kind of difficult and not very fun, but in the end has a nice solution. So let's see what we have. We want to find all real numbers x satisfying the equation x squared over x minus 1 plus the square root of x minus 1 plus the square root of x minus 1 over x squared equals x minus 1 over x squared plus 1 over x minus 1, that has a square root as well, plus x squared over the square root of x minus 1. And I think the takeaway here, or maybe the big idea of the solution, is that we'd like to make a simplifying substitution and see where that takes us. Okay, so looking a little bit more closely at this equation, we'll notice that everything on the left-hand side is exhibited on the right-hand side in the form of its reciprocal. So check it out. This term right here is over here, but they are reciprocals of each other. Likewise, this middle term right here is this middle term right here after the reciprocal has been taken. And we've got similar structure here and here. And so that together with this little idea that I gave down here really gives us a motivation to make the following substitution. So let's set capital X equal to this first magenta term. So we've got X squared over X minus one. We'll set capital Y equal to this orange underlined term. So square root of X minus one. And then we'll set capital Z equal to this green underlined term. So square root of X minus one over X squared. Okay, great. And now let's observe that given this setup, our given equation turns into the following thing. Well, notice that the left-hand side is simply X plus Y plus Z. But then the right-hand side, given all those reciprocals that we talked about, is 1 over x plus 1 over y plus 1 over z. So in some ways, we've made this thing look a lot nicer, but in other ways, we've like made it more complicated. So it's nicer because, well, there's no squares, there's no square roots and stuff like that. It's a little bit more complicated because now it's an equation with three variables. So that being said, perhaps there are some other nice relations among these substituted variables that we created. And if we look at it for just a second, we'll notice that if we take their product, we get one. That's because this square root of x minus one will build in the denominator just to an x minus one. That'll cancel this x minus one, and then the x squareds will also cancel. So let's maybe put that here as an addendum. So also we know that x times y times z equals one. So now let's see if that can take us anywhere. Well, perhaps we'd like to take this first maybe blue dot equation and write it without denominators. Well, if that's possible at least. And I think it is because here we can maybe combine everything. So giving it the common denominator of x times y times z. So here we'll have this is yz plus xz plus xy over xyz. So again, that's just simply combining all of those terms. Oh, but check it out. We've got x times y times z here, but we also know that x times y times z is one. So this is simply yz plus xz plus xy. But now let's maybe move this right-hand side of the equation over to the left-hand side of the equation, thus creating a new equation, which will be a little bit easier to work with. I'll write this as minus xy plus yz plus xz, and then plus x plus y plus z, we have that's equal to zero. So I grouped them like that and factored the minus sign out. 
because let's notice that here we've got all of the quadratic terms attached to a minus sign. Here we have all of the linear terms attached to a plus sign. And this gives us really like some strong Vieta formula vibes. Taking that into account, it's fairly obvious that we can add x plus y plus z and subtract one, which is really not doing anything given this green box and hope for some simplification. Because now we've got all of the cubic terms, now we have all of the quadratic terms, the linear terms, and then those are just like constants, if you will. Okay, great. And then let's notice that at this stage we can factor it. And this may not seem like an obvious factorization, but this kind of factorization shows up enough that it's good to keep in mind. So this will factor in the following way. We'll have capital X minus one, capital Y minus one, times capital Z minus one, and then that's equal to zero. And you could maybe just like expand this out and observe that you get exactly this line right here. But let's notice that means that X equals one or Y equals one or Z equals one. Okay, so now let's take those up there to our substitutions for capital X, Y, and Z and see if we can solve for little x. So climbing our way back out of the substitution, we've got the following equations for X. Now these are fairly routine to solve, so let's just do them one at a time. So starting here, so we'll multiply both sides by X minus one, leaving us with X squared equals X minus one, which tells us that X squared minus X plus one equals zero. And now we can solve that using the quadratic formula and it's pretty easy to see that we get X equals one plus or minus I times the square root of three over two. Okay, so there's our first solution. Oh, but we're only looking for real solutions and that's most definitely a complex number, so that's not actually one of the solutions that we want. Okay, so now let's move on to this second one. So we've got the square root of x minus one equals one. Well, this is pretty easy. We just square both sides. And we'll get x minus one equals one, which tells us x is equal to two. And well, that is a legitimate solution. So we've got one solution at least. Now let's move on to this next case where the square root of x minus one over x squared is equal to one. But that pretty quickly simplifies to x to the fourth equals x minus one. So either this has an obvious solution or it has no solution. And that's because this is, well, it's from a math contest. And generally you wouldn't be asked to find roots of quartic polynomials unless they were obvious. Okay, so let's maybe first define a function and work towards showing that this does not have a solution. So we'll define f of x to be x to the fourth minus x plus one. And let's notice that the possible rational roots are simply plus minus one by the rational root theorem. And I would say that the rational roots are probably the obvious roots that I was talking about before. But let's notice that f of one is equal to one, whereas f of negative one is equal to three. Well, notice those are neither of them equal to zero, so that means we don't have rational roots. So this gives us some motivation to think that there are no roots of this polynomial equation. But if there are no roots of this polynomial equation, or no real roots, I should say, then that means that this equation has no real solution. Well, since this is an even degree polynomial and the leading coefficient is positive, we know that it must have a global minimum. So all we'll do is show that its global minimum is positive, but then if its global minimum is positive, then, well, it can never be equal to zero. Okay, so let's recall that minimums occur when the derivative is zero. So let's take the derivative, so f prime of x, so that's gonna be four x cubed minus one, set that equal to zero, but that's pretty easy to solve. That'll give us x is equal to the cube root of one over four. And that's the only real solution for that. And then let's find the value of the function at this minimum. So we've got f of the cube root of one quarter. 
So let's see, it'll be one quarter to the power four over three minus one quarter to the power one over three plus the number one. And now let's play a bit of an inequality game here. So that will start by observing that one quarter to the power one third is most definitely less than one. Okay, but that means if we replace it with one in this equation, we get something larger. That's because it's attached to a minus sign. So this is bigger than one quarter to the four thirds minus one plus one, which is equal to one quarter to the four thirds, which is bigger than zero. So let's see, what have we done here? We've shown that at the minimum, this function is bigger than zero. But if this function is bigger than zero at the minimum, that means it's never equal to zero. But if it's never equal to zero, that means, well, trickling up, that this equation right here has no real solutions which uh, is really what we wanted to end up with because that means that this x equals two is the only real solution to our equation over here. Now, I guess we found this complex solution right here, so maybe a bonus question here would be to find the complex solutions to this equation. In fact, I think in this case it's not super hard. Maybe post in the comments if you know a strategy for doing that, maybe in a really easy way. And thanks for sticking around this long. If you're still around and you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button. Subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.